Good morning, everyone. Well, uh, I must say, as uh, I'm extremely glad as I'm here this morning uh, that I didn't spend any of my Christmas break writing a pre-prepared speech. Uh, and in fact, as the date became closer in late January, I thought, oh, I'll just hold off a bit. Then we got to February. <sighs> anyway, the result was at 11.30 last night, there I was going, time, time, time. <laughs> so, um, this will be uh, a fairly um, a casual speech, you might say, and, um, and I'm very happy to take um, questions uh, later. Uh, but my, uh, my confusion, of course, uh, about what is going to happen and has been happening in the political scene um, is uh, certainly uh, shared, I, I suppose I could be comforted, but actually I'm rather dismayed to say by, of course, everybody in the Liberal Party as well, uh, where nearly 40 people in a party wanted to spill, even though another 40, that's all the, the um, ministers and uh, you know, parliamentary secretaries and things, were actually supposed to be bound to vote against it. So that gives you some idea that even though he, uh, Abbott won, you know, won um, how much damage um, that was done. Uh, and, and the lack of faith in him in the, in the party behind him, as opposed to the party sitting against, uh, uh, opposite him in, in Parliament. Um, so the general strategy now I think we've seen um, is to hunker down and insist that everyone is now united behind a chastened, his word, M, uh, PM, who has promised to change his way and, uh, ways and become more consultative and collegial. Um, and... Uh, I think you know he's he's tried to you know sound however a bit more aggressive against the Labor Party um, this week uh, and keep on going, uh, but I suspect that uneasy truce with uh, the people in his own party will kind will keep on go keep on going until the budget or just after the budget uh, unless there's a you know massive another kind of complete stuff up along the way which is possible certainly um, although not probable but. You know, we can't rule out uh, anything. I'm not sure uh, how this next couple of months will play out. Um, and in fact, when I was asked to do thinking about this, I thought, well, I actually feel a bit of a fraud uh, because I gave uh, an Outlook speech um, last year to this conference. And uh, I did say that I thought that the Senate would be far more difficult to handle uh, than the government, even at the highest levels, seem to think. Um, but what I also said was that, you know, the caricature of Tony Abbott was so extreme that really, you know, all he had to do was turn up and sound more reasonable and people would say, oh, well, he's not as bad as we thought. Now, clearly, that didn't go according to plan. So you'll have to take my predictions <laughs> with a fairly large grain of salt. Um, I won't spend too much time on, on the past year, given this is supposed to be for the year ahead, but I think we do need to point out that um, you know, the rot did start um, pretty early, I think, with the government effectively vacating the political field for too many months after the election. This was said to be, I mean, Tony Abbott's view, which was I was kind of sympathetic to, was that the public was sick of politics on the front page, and it probably is even true today. Um, but it meant that apart from a few business announcements, you know, and, and, and policy announcements like an end for subsidies for manufacturing in the car industry or food manufacturers like SBC, and a bit of tough talk on the budget outlook and, you know, the ch and, and, and how it was worse than expected just before Christmas, nothing much happened from the government in terms of setting out the problems and their ideas of the ways out of them. And then, and then there was kind of almost silence. The Commission of Audit got all mixed up, you know, with the, with the timing of the budget for reasons we now know we, was obviously was a mistake. But it meant that the ground was not prepared, even amongst most government MP, MPs. And, uh, and they, get, they had to go out and defend um, all these deeply unpopular policies in the budget, which, frankly, in many ways just didn't add up uh, politically. I mean, Jane made all the point about, you know, why we are where we are in the budget and why we need to make changes. But politically, you know, there were all sorts of weird things. Like, I, I, I'm not sure... No one has claimed credit for the idea of linking the medical research fund with the Medicare co-payment, uh, although uh, I... I suspect it was the Treasurer, um, but it was disastrous because it just muddled 
the entire uh, message about the need for budget repair. You know, why was $7 going to then a research fund? And similarly, the university reforms package, for example, became seen as just another budget spending cut rather than being part of necessary changes aimed at improving universities um, and, and, rather than, and, uh, and trying to stop the declining standards. And as we all know, you know, the, pay, the paid parental leave scheme became a you know, wonderful symbol for the Labor Party um, as the government that had its priorities all wrong. And Abbott had campaigned on trust and promised he wouldn't abuse that as Labor had. But it hamstrung him, given he had not mentioned uh, how much sacrifice would be necessary. And he also didn't have any response to the immediate and obvious allegations of unfairness. And because any idea of tax changes had been put off to yet another review in the next term of government, Spending cuts would inevitably fall most heavily on those who benefit most from that spending, who tend to be less well off. Um, and actually, in the short term at least, the spending cuts were relatively uh, modest. It was, you know, putting the budget on the tra trajectory. But the talk from the government and the scare campaign from Labor only encouraged the idea that the cuts were much bigger immediately and that far worse was to come in health and education. And it just confirmed, I think, to people why they were right to be suspicious of uh, Abbott and his agenda, which Labor was successfully able to define as ideological rather than pragmatic. Um, so the government raged at the Senate for obstructionism, but for most voters, the Senate was acting as protection uh, from things they didn't want. And then you added in a few howlers, you know, from Joe Hockey on, you know, poor people and car all those types of things. And so Labor was able to get away with this, really, in, you know, in a, in a way which was r ridiculous. But, I, I mean, I remember one um, senior Labor figure laughing to me a couple of months ago that, um, that actually the government hadn't done that much, but everyone still thought they were bastards. Uh, and and it, it, the, also, the government wasn't able to get much, uh, as it had hoped, out of the achievements that it did have. For example, you know, the free trade agreements, which are substantial. Um, and Andrew Robb, of course, tried to put that in a broader economic picture of what it could mean and the opportunities and everything. But in fact, he really just got a few stock lines from the Prime Minister and the Treasurer about, oh, you know, free, free, free trade agreements and this is all, all good. Um, so it's true Abbott has been better on foreign policy uh, and national security than people wanted, but it wasn't enough, has not been enough to, um, to replace the, the drought of good news uh, domestically. So by the end of the year, uh, people were feeling threatened by change rather than reassured that the country was going in the right direction. And add to all that, of course, the building fury in the ministry and the back bench about the treatment from the Prime Minister's office. It really only became very public in November and December, but it had been going all, growing all year, ready to uh, explode. And we now know, you know, far more than we should. Um, who, who the Prime Minister's chief advisor is in, in Peter Credlin. I mean, this is just not the right thing for a staffer to be so public like this. But not only that to become the story, but not only that, of course, she'd managed to uh, completely infuriate the backbenchers as well as senior ministers. So this is a, was a very, very um, a dangerous combination. And then MPs headed home for Christmas and they were being repeatedly bailed up by angry voters complaining they didn't like Abbott or hockey or what was happening. Um, and, and then, of course, you know, then we had the nonsense about, you know, the changes on the Medicare. People didn't quite understand what was going on, but they knew there was nothing good. And then, of course, so this whole situation's there. And then came Australia Day. Now, I mean, in, as we know, you know, Prince Philip, hardly the most serious uh, issue for the country. But it crystallised, it absolutely crystallised the the fury uh, that this Prime Minister was not acting as he was supposed to act, both among his own party and amongst the public. I remember my sister, who pays absolutely no attention to politics, none, um, and doesn't read a paper, certainly not mine, um, said, how could a smart man be so stupid? And I think that was just the, you know, the general view. And, and so this meant that the MPs' nerves about holding their seats became panic about what was about to engulf them, uh, engulf them, plus a very real anger that how a government had so quickly turned the disgust at Labor ineptitude in government into the very real prospect that Labor would win the next election, despite having nothing really uh, done nothing really to deserve it or to prove they'd learned any lessons at all. And that sense of despair was very common amongst senior ministers uh, as, as well as backbenchers. So no wonder it turned into a 
bun fight. Uh, the idea of switching to the unknown in Malcolm, of course, and a, a Labor re rerun about um, destroying a Prime Minister in his first term did worry a lot of them, and of course Turnbull very obviously couldn't argue his case unless he wanted to be accused of undermining the Prime Minister, which he doesn't want to do, so, you know, so it, it, it was all very vague. It, there was some organisation going on. I mean, there was... It, it wasn't kind of coordinated in a kind of like a surgical strike, but the people were knew that it was time to have this backbench speak and then that backbench speak and stuff. So Abbott has survived much damaged, insisting he will become a much better prime minister and lead a better government as a result. Well, that is certainly possible. I've learned not to rule anything out, but it's not probable on the record so far. And given the difficult, really difficult economic situation um, that uh, both uh, Jane and Warren, the challenges that you know they've outlined um, this morning. So making the tough decisions on spending, as Abbott insists will, uh, sorry, as Hockey insists will still happen, and, and Abbott depends on the day insists will happen, is going to be much tougher still this year. Um, and, but while Abbott is trying to use this to boost popularity, uh, neither he nor the budget will be um, given the benefit of the doubt. I, I, I was interested, you know, the comparison, for example, with New Zealand. I mean, clearly, New Zealand's got it uh, doesn't have the the, uh, the joys of a federal system. Uh, but I spoke to Bill English, the finance minister there last year. I was really struck by him saying, "Look, you cannot tell people." repeatedly, your service is going to be cut. Your service is going to be cut. What you have to say is that your services will improve and they will become so much more efficient. And oddly enough, actually, that is how... I mean, I know it sounds very simple, but it actually... The way they had managed in New Zealand did manage to, to, to kind of get that support when you had zero increases, years of zero increases in, in budget in New Zealand. So I think that's instructive and I think that Abbott and Hockey should certainly have paid more attention to their Kiwi cousins and perhaps even closer to home um, to uh, New South Wales Premier Mike Baird, although I'll leave that to Sean to um, talk about. But now we've got the situation where we're promising to consult you know, desperately with the backbench and committees. Well, I mean... <laughs> that's going to be a recipe for paralysis as much as anything else. Um, and we'll still have, you know, a very unpopular package uh, of university reforms in the Senate. Uh, we'll still have to do what to do with the Medicare dilemma. Uh, and, and Abbott, of course, has now said, oh, no, I'll only put in promises if, uh, put in things if the doctors will, ag will agree. Well, good luck with that. I mean, they, you know, what are they going to agree to? Maybe, maybe Jane could be sent out as an as a emissary. Um, but one minister said to me that um, that Abbott and Hockey thought that sending things off to a committee or an expert panel, I see Dick Warburton there, um, was, was akin to dealing with a problem. Um, but in fact, it cre just created a whole lot more down the track and it didn't mean the government was talking to people about what needed to be done uh, and having the necessary discussion until it was too late. And I think we've seen that over and over again and I think we'll continue to see it with things like tax reform. Uh, and so now um, state and also state, of course, governments, the, the um, results in uh, the shock in Queensland, the expected result in Victoria, will, I think, make it much harder to promote, for Abbott to promote himself as the, you know, the infrastructure prime minister uh, that you know, he, w he wants to be. Um, given you know the, their importance uh, to the economy, um, and the Labor Party, I think at either a federal or a state level, will be uh, as difficult as possible, as it smells well more than smells, tastes blood, um, and um, and Shorten realizes that against all expectations, including I might add his own and the Labor Party's, that he actually is on track to become Prime Minister in 18 months' time, uh, and uh, they're of course you know extremely. They do not. They want Abbott to stay there, but but you know it now looks. Um, I, well, I think it looks unlikely that he will. Uh, and of course, the Labor will be keen to you know even if Turnbull comes in, which they don't want him to do, uh, they will at least be able to mock the government for being just a replay of um, Labor. Um, so I don't think it's going to mean that Labor will be any more um, cooperative uh, in terms of the or bi you know the idea of bipartisanship. I noticed we were floating in our editorial <laughs> the, uh, this week, and I think, aha, uh -huh, yeah, sure, um, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, but I do think that uh, that the government will try and put Labor on the spot more about their own answers to these problems. But at the moment, of course, the whole focus is on 
the Liberal Party and why, what they've done um, wrong or are not doing, and, and so Labor's getting away with things um, fairly easily. Uh, and, and that's going to continue. I, I do think that the media and the public are on kind of constant alert for any slight mistake by Abbott, and which will reverberate instantly. And that type of pressure really, I mean, would be impossible, I think, for almost anyone, you know, no matter how skilled um, a politician they were. So it's inevitable that there'll be more, you know, mistakes like we saw yesterday in describing, you know, the jobs thing as a holocaust. Uh, so the minister can't rely on the backing of his party or his most senior ministers for that long. It's looking like a pressure cooker in Canberra um, and it's ready to go off. And I think that will probably happen still um, just after the budget, um, and uh, it, because it's now, some of the MPs, for example, not all of them, but some of them, there were new new people who'd come in in the 2013 election. They actually, some of them thought, oh, well, we can just teach Abbott a lesson, you know, and he'll change his ways, and that'll be good. We just kind of, but in fact, the damage that has been done is is pretty um, e extraordinary in terms of public perception as well as um, party perception. Um, now, what? So, will we um, have a Turnbull Prime Minister? Um, I think, on the balance of probabilities, yes. Um, they took a look at Julie Bishop. They thought about that for a while, and then they said, "Nope, Malcolm." Um, and but but what we'll actually get from Turnbull's economic policy, uh, assuming this happens, um, is 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 remains really a bit of a mystery, other than the sense. Uh, to his own MPs as well, other than the sense that he gets the future better and he can sell a more positive message, which I think has been, in many ways, Abbott's downfall. He's been very, very good in, in attacking, you know, remaining as an opposition attack person, um, and he is good at that, but the country was wanting a more positive image and, an, and a sense of reassurance as well, and, and I think that has been um, lacking. And, in fact... Um, um, whether that some people are suggesting that that because the negativity has turned so much so strongly, that actually Turnbull, with Morrison, I think as treasurer, uh, will be much better at actually delivering um, budget repair. Mind you, if this scenario plays out, he'll have now he'll have a second budget already. I mean, so he actually doesn't have much time. Um, uh, but but the. Turnbull will be better at, at actually getting things back on track. Now, I don't know. You, I mean, we can only hope. Um, the business community, I think, is certainly um, pretty desperate for change after realising that um, Abbott will not be delivering anything like they had hoped even a year ago. And you saw those slides about, you know, confidence going sharply up and then sliding, sliding, and, you know, I think um, we'll continue to be in a pretty parlous position uh, for the next couple of months at least. Um, so... Uh, he, so Turnbull will have to come up with a more coherent economic um, strategy uh, despite the massive downturn in revenue and, and try and convince people that changing things steadily is both desi is di desirable and absolutely necessary. But that remains a very big gamble. And if you think I'm writing Abbott off too early, you know, it certainly gives me no joy to do so. Um, and as I said, you know, anything's possible in politics, but I don't see any sign that the pressure both internally and externally um, will relent. So then the risk is that Australia becomes, gets another, a continuation of inadequate government leading into another Labor government that's equally or even more ill-prepared for the challenges facing the country. Um, it's possible that Labor under Bill Shorten could turn into a reforming government in the style of Keating and Hawke, backed by the coalition, because they do tend to, you know, in opposition, support more than the Labor Party has done when they believe in the policy, you know, that the policies are good, um, economically insensible economic management. That's as opposed to some of the things that the Labor Party did in government. Um, but the Labor Party has changed significantly, I think, um, since the you know era of the 80s and 90s. Um, it, Shorten's got, I think, basically pro-business instincts in many ways, but it would take extraordinary skilled leadership, I think, from him, and uh, and strength to to change that. What is I think a very economically, um, well, what would be irresponsible? Um, it, it certainly hasn't that hasn't made any of the reforms or made any of the choices necessary um, in opposition, uh, and would be, I think, reluctant to do so in government. All they've, all they've basically said is this is all unfair, but they've offered very little 
um, themselves. Now, maybe that would change, and maybe you know, Shorten realizing and Bowen realizing that they're actually going to be landed with a big dile dilemma themselves will make a difference. But so far, we have um, not much um, evidence of this. Um, so, I think you know, one of the things that people are really angry about in a in a way, voters. It, 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 well, a lot of people who who didn't like Abbott, there were a lot of people who never liked Abbott, were never going to like Abbott, uh, and so he could never do anything right. But for a lot of other people in the middle, I think they kind of did, were suspicious, but actually did hope for a return of a kind of competent, grown-up government, as, as of course they, they promised. Um, now, that may have been unrealistic in terms of the economic choices, that this would all be done so painlessly in terms of the economic cho choices facing the country. But as Warren said, you know, there is, there are quite a lot of good things to celebrate in this economy. There are quite a lot of opportunities as well as threats and problems. And you need somehow to harness that. Uh, but in fact, I think what we've got now is, is this image of, of this kind of playground brawling uh, that's not going to do anyone much good. And I think that's why there will have to be um, a change. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you.